So if you follow my channel, you probably know that I primarily use Adobe Lightroom Classic and Photoshop for my color raw photo editing work. These are applications I've been using for years, but throughout the time I've always been interested to see what other companies are doing. And one of those relatively new non Adobe companies that is doing some really interesting work in the space, I think, is Skylum Software and their flagship photo editing app, Luminar Neo. It wasn't until recently through the support of uh, Skylum Software that I was able to sit down and you know, really take some time to really take a look at what its features and capabilities are in comparison to the tools that I've been using for so long. So this video is sponsored, but I wanna let you know that all of the content in this video comes directly from me. Skylum has had no editorial input in this video. They have not told me what to say or what not to say, what to feature or not feature. Everything in this video is my own experience and my own opinions about Luminar Neo and everything that I'm going to share in this video is my honest and true opinion about it. Without further ado, uh, let's jump over there and uh, let's take a look at Luminar Neo. So what you're looking at here, this is the catalog view of Luminar Neo, and this is where you are able to browse your local hard drive and find images to edit. You can organize them into albums. And uh, as far as editing images goes, you may edit straight out of camera raw images with Luminar Neo. There is raw support. It also has lens correction profiles built in, so you can fix issues with chromatic aberration, distortion, and vignette. Or you may edit rasterized Im images, JPEGs, TIFFs, all that good stuff. And over here in the right column, you'll see I have four tools installed. I have HDR merge, focus stacking, upscale, and panorama stitching. We're gonna come back and take a look at panorama stitching in a minute, but I wanna begin by taking a look at the main editing interface. And as you can see, the editing interface in Luminar Neo is somewhat similar to other applications. I mean, we have you know a histogram view up here and a bunch of tools in the right column, but the type of tools that are provided by Luminar are <laughs> completely different. And it's interesting because it's a mix of technical tools, like the same kind of tools you would find in Lightroom. For example, if you look in uh, the develop view here, these are all, you know, the same kind of raw, you know, color and tonality editing tools that you would expect to find elsewhere. But then when you dig into the interface, you'll see that there are these tools like creative tools where you can relight an image, add atmosphere, sun rays. So where I want to begin is with one tool in particular, and that is this one all the way up here at the top that's called Enhance. AI. Now watch what this tool does with this image. This is this is kind of crazy. If we uh, crank up this accent slider here, I mean, <laughs> I mean, really, that's not bad at all. I mean, nice color, nice saturation, nice vibrancy, nice handling of the the contrast of the image, nice uh, you know tonal roll off from the highlights to the to the midtones to the shadows. And I say not bad because honestly, my expectations are super low with this kind of stuff because, well, as you've probably experienced with other with other tools like Lightroom, where you click on that auto button, oftentimes the results ended up end up looking quite bad and just not at all what you expected uh, to get. But this actually works quite well. And from what I understand uh, from reading the documentation, this enhance AI tool, utilizes like 12 or so different tools underneath the hood in order to you know fix color and tonality and all these different things and uh, so there's some underlying intelligence going on there to figure out you know what's appropriate for the image and to make the necessary adjustments okay so let's move on and take a look at some of the other tools and uh, I'm just going to bring this down a little bit so that we're not like fully developing the image and we have a little bit of latitude with some of the other tools and let's begin here with landscape in this landscape box there is a slider for golden hour and if we crank this up well, as you can see, the light is getting more orange, a little more yellow. We're getting more of that purple and more of that magenta. Then underneath the landscape, we have vignette. And I'm drawing attention to this tool because there are a couple of things in here that are pretty cool. So let me turn down and darken the vignette. And this, of course, darkens the, the edges and the borders of the image. But we can control where this vignette is placed by toggling on choose subject and then just click around and you know find the uh, the center point wherever we want it to be. So let's just park it right there and the other interesting tool is down here in the advanced settings there is a third slider called inner light. And this does exactly what you think it does. I mean if we raise this we are then adding light and brightening the uh the center of the vignette effect. And uh let me just that darkening I think is a little too much. So let me bring that up. And now toggle this effect on and off. And as you can see, we're not only darkening the outside, but we're brightening the inside. And this is actually something that I do quite often using radial masks and 
um, in Adobe Lightroom, darkening the outside and then just giving a little bit of punch of light to the center of the image really helps, I think, especially you know with an image like this one. Uh, but the cool thing about this vignette tool is that both of these effects are combined in one tool and it's really simple to do without, uh, without applying a mask. Okay, next I wanna show you this Relight AI tool. This one is really interesting to me because this is based on a common photo editing technique, especially in landscape photography, where you draw a linear gradient from, you know, from the bottom of the frame up in order to help darken the foreground and then add light to the midground or the background in order to you know, direct the, the viewer's eyes so the viewer's eye know where, knows where to go and they're not getting hung up on, uh, on a bright foreground. Uh, when they should be, you know, looking further back into the image. And it adds depth to uh, the image as well. But what's cool about this Relight AI tool is that you don't have to use a linear gradient. And instead of that hard line that you get with a linear gradient, this actually adds like a contoured uh, mask. It analyzes the image and it knows where the foreground is. It recognizes elements in the foreground. It recognizes elements in the midground and background. It knows where to draw everything for you in order to get uh, an accurate and uh, realistic uh, look for your image. So let me show it to you. Okay, so here we have three sliders. We have brightness near, far, and depth. If we turn down near the foreground at the, at the bottom of the image, uh, directly in front of the camera, that is being darkened. And if we turn up far, well now the midground and the background, and this will probably be easier to see if I just crank both of these up. This is not where I intend to actually put my uh, settings, but it helps you see it at least in a video. Then we have this depth slider here. So if we adjust depth, you can see that it is, you know, adjusting where that darkening effect begins and ends and the same for the brightening effect. So you can play around with this and just kind of get it right where you want it. Actually, there's a there's another image I want to show you that's even better than this one. See how bright the foreground is here? And that's totally not what I want. The balance is off. So let's um, Let's bring this down and let's darken the foreground a little bit. And then we are going to raise up brightness far and add a little bit of light out there in the distance. So again, the balance is now much better. Now this image is actually a really good example for what's in advanced settings. Uh, in here we have uh, a dehalo tool. We have a warmth near and a warmth far tool. And again, this is another technique that I commonly do. Whether you use Luminar Neo or not, this is something good to learn is that when you do dodging and burning to an image, oftentimes you need to adjust the color temperature of that, uh, of that change. Because if you are darkening a highlight, uh, highlights tend to be warmer, especially in landscape photography. And if you dim that, well, then you're gonna end up with just kind of like a, an orangey kind of brown color and it's not going to look like a shadow. A shadow or a like a darker uh, tonal value in a landscape image would typically have a cooler value, it wouldn't be quite as warm. So I can make this darkening effect in the foreground look more realistic by cooling it off, by pulling some of the warmth out of it. And now it is looking much more natural to my eye. And we can, you know, we can add a little bit of warmth out there in the distance if we want to. I don't particularly feel a need for this image. I like it being like this here, but we've definitely accounted for that, that darkening in the foreground and cooled it off. And uh, yeah, not, not a bad place to start. Then there is an atmosphere tool, which does you know exactly what you would expect it to do. Fog, layered fog, mist, and haze. And this adds just, you know, a little bit of glow, a little bit of uh, diffusion to your image. Uh, just different styles and different ways of doing it. If you're, you know, trying to, you know, create that kind of effect, that's a good way to do it. Uh, another interesting tool is this matte tool. So this uh, creates kind of like a, a matte effect in the image where you're able to, you know, add a little bit of a filmic uh, kind of fade to the image. It lifts the black point and compresses the, the highlights a little bit and turn that on and off. And again, as you can see, it just, you know, kind of flattens out the contrast in the image a little bit. And again, that's the kind of thing that taps into like a particular need, a particular thing that people are trying to do with the image, but without having to know exactly how to do it. Like, you know, you don't have to go into the tone curve and, you know, lift the black point and, or drop down the, the white point and all that kind of stuff. With this, it's pre-built for you, which is pretty cool. 
Okay, now I want to take a look at glow. So again, glow is kind of like atmosphere. Uh, you know, this adds a glowing uh, effect in here. And as you would expect, uh, because we've seen so many landscape centric tools in here, one of the glow types is the Orton effect. And the Orton effect is a popular thing that a lot of landscape people do, you know, mainly in Photoshop. And it's a thing where you add a little bit of Gaussian blur to uh, to the highlights of the image, a little bit of color, and then blend that into the image in a natural way so that light actually looks more like light because digital sensors oftentimes render light in kind of a flat and not a particularly emotive way. And Orton is, uh, is a treatment that you can do in order to create some of that glow. And if we crank this up, you can see that you know the light is getting glowier uh, but then there is an Orton soft effect as well. And this one just kind of dials it back a little bit and it's not quite as uh, aggressive. Now, what's interesting is that down here in advanced, we have more options. We have softness, brightness, contrast, and warmth. Again, this is, you know, is exactly what I was just talking about. You can add some warmth to that blur, to that glowing effect so that we are bringing out um, more of that, you know, creating the effect of light and the feeling of light and also softening the contrast in the image a little bit. So let me just toggle this on and off. And yeah, as you can see, like it looks, you know, like um, it looks a little more uh, digital like this, but then it starts to look a little more painterly, a little bit brighter, a little bit softer by adding that Orton effect. So again, you know, because this is all slider based, you can just dial in or, you know, add or remove however much of this effect you want. Okay, the next tool I wanna share with you is Super Contrast down here in the professional area. This one I find to be really interesting because this is a global contrast tool that targets specific tonal regions within the image. You can either apply contrast to the highlights, to the midtones, or the shadows, which is different than just applying a blanket uh, you know, contrast adjustment to the entire image. Like I'm pretty happy with, you know, the black point of the image, the white point is fine, but sometimes the mids, well, they end up looking a little mid. Uh, <laughs> let's, um, let's just turn up midtone contrast a little bit and you can see what's happening, right? And so now we're adding more uh, contrast to the image. We're increasing the depth of the image without affecting the black point or the white point of the image. And if I just toggle that on and off, I think that looks uh, really quite nice. Okay, so the final tool we're going to take a look at is the new Panorama Stitching Tool. This is a new extra that was recently added to Luminar. And for this, we're going to go back to the catalog. And I already have some uh, panoramic images here that we're going to uh, blend together. So going to select all the images and then just drag them onto the Panorama Stitching Extra window here. And this could take hardly any time at all or a while, depending on you know the type of computer you have, how much memory you have, how much power uh, your computer has. Here is the, uh, the net result. And by the way, um, one of the things that I've learned to do, and the part of the reason why this image looks so wide, is because I've made the mistake a few times in the past of, you know, when doing like a panoramic sequence with the camera, with the camera uh, shooting vertical, uh, it, I, it still bothers me. I have some images that like, I so want to go back and retake. Images where like where I started and where I ended, I didn't go far enough. Like I kind of you know, just stopped where I thought, you know, it's like, yeah, that's probably good enough. Or I, I started too late. Like, so what I've learned to do is just, shoot almost like at 180 degrees, like, you know, straight this way and then all the way over to here, even though I know I'm probably not going to use anything <laughs> in, you know, that direction. I'm probably not going to use anything from where I started. At least I can then crop out the middle and I have more raw material to be working with. Looks pretty good. I mean, obviously there's some additional development work that needs to be done to this. It's a little bit flat, but what I want to point out here is that you do have options down here for uh, changing the uh, the perspective of how these files are uh, merged together. So you have the typical options. You have like spherical and cylindrical and uh, some other options here too. Now, one of the things that's different about the panoramic stitching tool in Luminar compared to say the panoramic tool in Lightroom is that you can actually grab on the image um, and you can just, you know, throw it around. You can change the the, uh, the perspective, the warp on the image in order to get your vertical lines right and to get your horizon line where you want it to be. So, uh, for, so, you know, for me in this image, I think just a little bit of a, a little bit of a downward bend 
in the middle of the image looks right. Oh, and you can come over here to the sides too and rotate it as well if you want to. So I think that looks good. So we're going to hit continue and then we get to the cropping interface. And here is where I can actually <laughs> create, you know, the image that I intended to create, the one that I saw when I was uh, you know, out there photographing this. And then we can slide the image back and forth. I think that's good enough. Uh, let's do crop. And now we have our cropped image. Everything looks good and we can hit save. And here's our final image here. This is a 16-bit uh, TIFF image. And we can then come in here to the edit view and start making, you know, whatever, <laughs> whatever adjustments we want to make. So if you'd like to check out Luminar Neo for yourself and see what it can do with your photography, there is a special link and discount code available down below in the video description. Or you can also uh, scan this uh, QR code here to download a free trial of Luminar Neo for macOS and Windows. Just so you know, these are affiliate links, which means this channel of mine would receive a small monetary credit in return for any purchase that you happen to make, but at no additional cost to you. And those credits go directly towards funding and supporting the content that you see here on my channel. That's it, everyone. Hope you enjoyed the video. Thanks to Skylum for supporting this video and for sponsoring it. I greatly appreciate it. And that's it. I'll see you next time.